Many times when we make a solid during a chemical reaction, we need to remove that. And the easiest way to usually do that is by filtration. So, I think you've all seen one of these. It's just a, a glass funnel. There should be one in all of your lab drawers. The problem comes in with the filter paper. How do I get this flat, round piece of filter paper to fit in that cone-shaped funnel? Now, I have seen people try doing it this way, but it doesn't work very well. So, how can we make this somehow fit into that funnel? There's a little bit of geometry involved if you're really interested, but we'll dispense with that for now. You basically have two options when you're trying to fold a filter paper to fit in that funnel. You can either do a simple quarter folded cone, or if you're feeling a little fancier, or if your reaction requires it, you can use a fluted filter paper. So, so we've got our round piece of flat filter paper. Now, just as the name implies, a quarter folded cone, if we fold this in half once, and be a little bit careful. You don't want to put really tight creases in your filter paper because that damages the fibers and it doesn't filter as well. So pinch them down so that they're folded but don't go too crazy on that. Now on the second fold, this is the one that's really important. On the second fold it usually works better if you don't quite fold it all the way up to halfway. So you see I'm letting that gap just a little bit and again just give it a little press to fold. Now we've got approximately a quarter of a circle. I've got one arm that's a little shorter than the other. To fit this into a flute, into a glass funnel, open up the larger side. So now we've got three layers of paper on one side and one layer of paper on the other. And what we've made is actually pretty close to a 60 degree cone. When we put this in a glass funnel, it sits right down in the funnel. Now, if I let go of this, it pops up a little bit. But as soon as we get this wet, it's going to stick down in the funnel a little bit better. The other option, starting with this flat filter paper, is a fluted filter paper. Now, fluted filter papers have a few advantages. They've got more surface area, so they tend to drain a little bit faster but eh, they take a little bit more folding and they're really not necessary for a lot of things that people do. To make a fluted filter paper, we're gonna start the same way. Let's fold this in half. Again, don't make your creases too aggressive or else you'll break through. And now I need to figure out where the center of this is. So I'm gonna fold this in half, not to fold it, but let's line those up and I'm just going to give the center a little crease or a little pinch so I can see where the center is. So now I've got my half moon of filter paper. I can see where the center is. To flute this from that center point fold over a little bit of a flap. So you see I folded just a little bit of the flap. Now fold it again in the opposite direction. Pinch it down so you see I'm making a little bit of a Z fold there. Now for the easy part, keep doing that all the way across. Just alternate back and forth. Don't worry if it doesn't line up exactly. That's not really that important. So now I've got this little triangle of filter paper. If I spread that open a little bit, it looks kind of like a little fan. I can open that filter paper and now those flutes will allow this to sit once again down in a glass funnel. And again, it's going to pop up a little bit as soon as you've got some water in there, as soon as you've got some liquid in there, it'll sit down a little bit more. So again, what's the point of a flute versus a flat, a fluted filter paper? You see there's a lot more surface area. So if you have something that filters pretty slowly, this usually works a little bit better. 
So once we've got the filter paper folded, now we come to the next step. How do I keep this from tipping over? Well, depending on what you're doing and how much time you have, you could just hold it. But some of these filtrations can take a while. I've seen a number of people try to very carefully balance these filters in a beaker or an Erlenmeyer flask, but because of their shape, these funnels are extremely top heavy. So the chances that you're going to be able to balance this and not have the whole thing tip over and dump your experiment out, pretty small. The best way to usually do this is either with a ring, find an appropriate size ring, and it holds that filter pretty nicely there, or probably at this point easier to find one of these little three finger clamps you can clamp right onto the long stem that's one of the advantages of having a long stem on here so clamp that long stem that holds it pretty securely this is just some green water I made it green so it's easier to see my filter papers popping out if I wet it down Now it's stuck to the walls, it doesn't pop out anymore. Same thing holds true if I'm using a fluted filter paper. It's a little poppy, but once you get some liquid in there and get it wet, it'll settle down pretty nicely. So whether you're looking at fluted or at flat filter paper, either one of them works fine. One of the advantages of the quarter fold filter paper is if you fold it right, now here we can see the reason for leaving that one arm a little bit shorter. If you fold it right, you can see that the entire top edge of this has sealed down once it's wet, has sealed down to the inside of the funnel. So if I'm going to filter something, it's a little bit forgiving. If you maybe miss a little bit, go up the side, you have a little bit better chance of not losing a whole bunch of your solid because the top edge is stuck down to the bottom of the funnel. With the fluted paper, well, works great, but if I miss, I just spent, sent a whole bunch of material down into my receiving container below. So there we have it. Whether you do quarter fold or fluted, that's how you get a flat round piece of filter paper into a 60 degree cone shaped funnel.